Well, today's job on the hot rod is going to be a very difficult one, but hopefully very rewarding. Part of the problem of using a uh, really ancient carburation like this is uh, they really don't work as well as modern carbs and a problem with these is really not due to their design but what happens when I uh, am out driving around and it's over 100 degrees here most of the time I come in and I park it and the heat of the engine then builds because there's no more water circulating from the radiator and as the heat builds it heats up the gasoline in the fuel bowls and it actually boils, spills over and goes down into the engine and floods it. Now where this becomes a real issue is say I drive somewhere, stop, uh, come back in about 20 minutes and the car is hard to start. Not only that, raw gas in your cylinders will thin out the oil and cause premature wear okay, of your rings primarily. So I've got to come up with a way to insulate the fuel in the bowls. Now remember only the center two carburetors are actually functional but I have to come up with a way to insulate them from the heat that develops down here in this aluminum uh, intake manifold. Now what I'm thinking of is to make a quarter inch thick masonite spacer that goes between the carburetor and the manifold. Now that will insulate it from the heat that develops in the manifold and have the spacer protrude out say this far sort of like a diving board to pre uh, prevent the heat rising from the manifold uh, from uh, heating up the gas uh, in the fuel bowl and boiling it sort of like a burner on the oven and the water in this case gasohol which unfortunately boils at a much lower temperature than regular gasoline but that's all we can buy here okay the politicians have inflicted the alcohol the uh, ethanol on us uh, and we're stuck with it and it causes all kinds of grief and this is a good so what I've got to do is undo the linkage uh, and the fuel lines and then undo the nine bolts that hold the three carburetors in place lift them off fabricate a spacer that will fit here between the carburetor and the manifold that will allow the gas and air mixture to pass through and then put it all back together and pray that it works. Step one I have removed those air horns that go on top. You can see because the middle one's the only one that works that's the screen that is darkened. Next I'm going to disconnect the linkage from the accelerator at this point and the linkage that connects this array of carburetors here from the passenger side array and then I can undo the nine bolts and hopefully these will lift off. Well step one removing the uh, accelerator linkage was easy but then uh, in the world of unforeseen consequences I pull off the gas line and it's shooting gas uh, like you know three feet and I couldn't figure it out so I start pouring it into a gas can uh, that and finally after about a gallon and a half I'm starting to wonder how since this is higher than the gas tank can this be happening and then it occurred to me the gas tank is sealed and hot uh, and therefore it's built up a bunch of pressure so I uh, pop the uh, the gas tank uh, cap let out the pressure and now the incessant flow of gasoline has ceased thank God just in time for the arrival of the fire department now after making a mental note to buy a, a vented gas cap that actually is vented um, I removed the connection between this bank of carburetors and the linkage for the passenger side now it's just a matter of nine bolts and lift of course it nothing ever works that easy these things have probably been Healy arc to the manifold and will require uh, cold chisels and sledgehammers to remove but we'll see well, I found a use for some of that gas that poured out uh, when I undid the line. Uh, I have an old tree stump over here I've been tripping over for a couple years. Uh, so let's give it a dose of its own medicine. I want you to imagine just how much fun it is to undo the nuts here on the inside of these carburetors. Not much room for a wrench, eh? And you can't fit a socket on there either. No fun. Well, eight of the nuts have been removed and now it's number nine which is proving to be a nightmare have you ever noticed how there's always one one knot or one bolt that just fights you to the death 
and it's generally the last one and I wonder if it's because we we sort of subconsciously know which one's going to be terrible so we put it at you know last and sure enough it's a self-fulfilling prophecy so I may have to make a, a wrench a 90 degree bent wrench to get this we'll see well I got it using the old vertical wrench with screwdriver uh, technique okay and it's loose now I've got to finish well all nine nuts have been removed and uh, against all expectation all three carburetors are loose and ready to lift off I won't have to use thermite and a seven foot breaker bar to try to get these things loose um, it's strange isn't it how the things that you predict are going to cause you grief never do and then things like a pressure built up in the fuel tank and impossible to reach nuts which you know wouldn't be a bad name for a band um, will surprise you and just you know make a fairly easy task a living nightmare but I guess that's life in the hot rod biz okay time to pull these babies and uh, get working on uh, making that spacer one more thing whenever you're working with carburetors uh, make sure that every single nut and washer is accounted for before you lift them because sure as heck if you don't one of them is going to fall into the intake manifold and into the engine okay so take inventory before you lift okay put that uh, get a tattoo that says that well the carburetors are off and as you can see uh, these are the plates that were uh, used to seal off the manifold uh, for the four carburetors that uh, were not going to be used. I might change that in the future. And here we have the uh, the gasket which I'm going to use as a uh, pattern for my uh, masonite spacer. Alright, let's see if I can get this uh, off. Oh yeah, well that was hard, wasn't it? God, that was terrible. Um, and now I can use this as a pattern. Well, just like when you do speaker reconing, you uh, use tape to protect uh, areas that you do not want dirt and grunge getting into. So I used a little um, duct tape here. Also notice how nicely these stainless steel uh, Blanco plates uh, polished up. They still had that uh, film that, that uh, comes on sheets of stainless steel to protect it. So I just peeled it off and did some minor cleaning and now these babies are ready for the car show. I also intend to clean up the intake manifold around here. Hopefully uh, the dripping and leaking and stinking and everything else will uh, not uh, reoccur and restain it. Okay, so uh, this will all be cleaned up real nicely before everything goes back together. This is kind of interesting. I'm looking at the bottom of the carburetors here. Uh, first off, this thing looks like brand new. It's just beautiful. Uh, I thought they probably had to remove the butterflies from the outer carburetor so that they wouldn't uh, hit those block off plates and interfere with the movement of the linkage but they're recessed in so deep that they were able to leave them in place so these are absolutely complete and um, operational carburetors which is great okay once again a nice discovery I've used the old gasket here to draw my diagram for my heat shield um, and now it's just a matter of drilling out the holes for the Venturis and um, I'm going instead of having two separate holes for fear that this little isthmus here might uh, come loose and fall into the engine I'm going to round it off like a bathtub okay okay here's that heat shield uh, out of tempered masonite with all the holes drilled and uh, in place and with the extension here that will block the heat rising from the manifold to uh, overheat the gasoline in the fuel ball. I painted the heat shield with that VHT header paint that can withstand like 2000 degrees and uh, so that it won't stand out against the aluminum, won't look like masonite and then uh, it's time to install the carburetor gasket and now the carbs can go back in place. Well, everything went back together pretty well. I dropped the carburetors down on the two blocking plates and on that heat uh, insulator. You can see that little diving board sticking out there. And then uh, hooked up the gas and I had to do some adjustments in the linkage because now this carburetor is about uh, 
a little over a quarter of an inch taller than the other two. It's really not that noticeable, but uh, there you can see the insulating plate in place. Okay, and the linkage works smoothly. So uh, now it's time to do the other side. Well, I went for a test drive with just the driver's side carburetor with that insulating plate in place. The passenger side doesn't have one, and I thought it'd be interesting to uh, see a comparison after the ride uh, to come back and let the heat soak take place. And I'll tell you, I'm really pleased with the result. The carburetor that has that insulating plate, the fuel bowl is actually probably about ambient temperature. It's probably around 98 degrees. Whereas the fuel bowl oh, on the other side is hot enough that it's unpleasant to touch it. Okay, probably 130 or 40 degrees, if not more. So the insulating plate really does work. Uh, so now that I've proven that, uh, I'll go through the work to install one over here on the passenger side. Also, while I had these little air scoops out, I thought it'd be kind of neat to paint them black inside to contrast with the chrome on the outside. Otherwise, they're just sort of as cast, and the uh, contrast between the inside and out is not that great. Ugh, look at that, though. Sweet, huh?